This episode of the Local Hustlers podcast is brought to you by Flamingo Pools, your go-to maintenance and repair company in the East Valley. Stop wasting your valuable time trying to take care of your pool and let the professionals at Flamingo Pools take care of it for you. Visit azflamingopools.com for a free quote today. You're listening to the Local Hustlers Podcast, East Valley Locals. Get connected with small businesses near you and dive deep into their stories, mindset, and motives. Entrepreneurs everywhere. Get ready to be inspired by business owners, entrepreneurs, and hustlers that you can relate to and learn from. And now, your hosts, Dallin Huso and Ridge Waldberg. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Local Hustlers podcast. This week, Ridge and I are here with Tyler Landvater, a bit of a serial entrepreneur, has a couple different businesses that we're super excited to talk about, including um, a construction company, a tool company, and uh, the Jump Shack, which is a trampoline company, and we're super excited to uh, to get to know about all that yeah. um, and to have you on the show, Tyler. Definitely stoked. Thanks. Glad to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. Um, why don't you take a couple of minutes before we kind of get into everything and give us a bit of a background story. Tell us about, you know, life growing up and what's, what's brought you to where you are today. Absolutely. So yeah, growing up, I've always kind of been in the construction field. My dad had a company where they do underground utilities. So they do like water, sewer, storm drain, Mm -hmm. um, excavation and installation for mostly like subdivisions, like track home communities. So growing up. I mean, I started, like, I remember, I think when I was, like, 16, kind of helping the, you know, with the construction company. I drove a water truck for a while. I helped as a dispatcher. Uh, I helped in the trenches. You know, I, I dug trenches with a backhoe before. Oh, wow. So just kind of all different <clears throat> areas of, of that company. But I realized, like, early on, like, this is fun, but it's not, like, that gratifying like mm-hmm. for me at least uh-huh. um so that's when i kind of transitioned into like more of the vertical construction yeah. so i remember it was like 2004 is when we got into doing like custom homes um it helped because my dad had done them in the past so he kind of was my mentor and helped me get started in the construction industry so at that time things were booming and I remember when we went to, we were going to do a spec house, you know, we we're going to build a house and try and sell it. But the banker we spoke with at that time, I remember when we went to him to get a construction loan, he's like, mm-hmm. actually, why don't you just build my con- house? Like, like we're actually in the process of wanting to build a custom house. I already have yeah. a lot. Um, why don't we just do this at a reduced rate since I know it's your first one? And, and then, uh, yeah, so that's how I started. Hmm. I uh, was able to build a custom home on the 18th hole of Red Mountain Ranch for my banker and uh-huh. it turned out great like it was a fun project learned a ton along the way um, my dad was there to kind of be my mentor yeah. throughout the process yeah and then from there like we ended up doing another one and then it just kind of started snowballing a little bit for some of the custom homes um, so we had a really good run for a while I got into doing like frozen yogurt franchises and oh wow some different commercial projects uh-huh and uh, then, you know, that's kind of when, like, 2009 is when it kind of hit me the hardest, when the yeah. economy was yeah. tanking. So, yeah, I remember I had to kind of, like, almost shut it down for, like, a year. Wow. And then in the meantime, like, I started a baby blanket company. Really? Where I was, like, I started, I always wanted, to, like, an internet business. Uh-huh. I thought that'd be so cool to, like, yeah, go work, e-commerce. work anywhere in the world from your computer yeah. and do something. So... Anyways, yeah, I, I started a company. My daughter, her name was London, so we called it Lundy Lou Blankets. Oh, that's cool. And I actually like bought a sewing machine, and I was taught myself how to sew. Oh wow! Wow. And, yeah, so it kind of. I mean, it's not like we sold a ton of them, but we did right. sell them. They were like the perfect baby shower gift. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah. that's cool. We did a bunch of those. That was kind of fun. Uh huh. Whatever um, happened with that then? So. I did that for a little bit. I uh, my family owned a, a frozen yogurt franchise, so uh-huh. I kind of helped work there. Um, ended up getting a job with a shade cell company called Tension, um, and did that for a little bit. And then I got back into construction um, when there was I think it was 2010. There was a big hail damage or oh, big storm yeah. that caused a ton of hail damage. So yeah. mm-hmm. one of my buddies had a construction company that you know they had been doing some things and wanted mm-hmm. me to run the hail damage. 
division. So okay. that kind of got me back in the, the door of construction. And uh-huh. We ran that for a few year a few years, and then um, they ended up wanting to f- you know focus on other things. So I ended up almost acquiring their their construction company, huh. uh-huh. and then I you know renamed it Tyco Construction, and then I've been doing that ever since. Cool. Cool. So. Yeah, so let's go back a bit. Um, so it sounds like your family, have they always been kind of entrepreneurial minded? Um, was this your dad's business that he originally started at construction? Um, he has his underground utility business. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's that's kind of like been what he's been doing. Yeah. He helped me get started on the, the vertical construction. Mm-hmm. So that I've just been doing on my own ever since he kind of started that. Yeah. How about, um, did you have any schooling? Um, I went to like a semester of MCC. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I think I ended up taking a, like 16, I passed out of like 16 credit hours, I think of Spanish at ASU. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like the, the thing that everyone does after returning from a mission and knowing being fluent in Spanish. Right. Yeah. So I was able to do that. But yeah, I, I realized like for me doing construction, I didn't think it was a good investment mm-hmm. to go to school and get a degree in construction management because I yeah. felt like being on the job was going to give me the training I needed. For sure, so yeah. That's what I decided to do, and it's uh, thankfully it's paid off. Yeah. Was your family supportive of that decision? Um. Yeah, absolutely. What, like, what do you think, uh, do you think you could have, like, learned anything more by going to school, or do you think the best value of your time was to just spend it on the job and learning from the trade personally i feel like just being on the job yeah. actually having the real life experience actually doing was it. what mm-hmm. was what i needed yeah. um, obviously you can learn things in a book and yeah you know be book smart with construction but like yeah. there's just so many things that happen during a project that you don't anticipate or yeah. maybe you don't learn about in a book that you just have to figure out for sure and yeah push through it and a lot of times you learn from your mistakes so mm-hmm. you know I've had plenty of problems over yeah. the years on projects where you're like okay that's never gonna happen again <laughs> and For sure. sometimes it costs you money and but you know once it once that happens like as long as you learn from it yeah you know yeah. you're not gonna have that happen again <laughs> can you tell us about any specific hurdles or or mistakes you made early on that you learned from um I think the biggest thing, like, obviously, it took a little bit to like really fully understand reading building plans. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I remember like one of the first houses I did, like I ordered all the the windows the wrong size. <laughs> oh, shoot. So in the framing stage, we kind of had to had to adjust for those sizes. Thankfully, the yeah. homeowner liked the size that yeah. I ordered; yeah. they were bigger, okay. so it ended up working out. But yeah, I mean, I had to eat some on that to pay the framers to reframe all the windows um yeah there's just i feel like there's just different things that like you go through that <laughs> ends up i don't know just costing kinda, you money and you're like shoot I wish yeah. I would have done that differently. <laughs> yeah just kind of small things here and there that add up and you just learn as you go yep absolutely that's sweet cool how about you take us into you have a tool company is that correct yeah so one of my trade partners is a—he's an electrician. Um, came to me one one time. Um, he had this idea of a screwdriver. There's mm-hmm. already one that exists. It's made by Klein Tools. But basically, it's a rotating screwdriver. So you—it's mainly used for like trimming out like outlet covers on um, mm-hmm. you know on like face plates for your outlets. Okay. Um, they have them like Phillips head heads or like flat heads. So it almost like comes out of at like a 45 degree angle uh-huh. and then goes straight and you like rotate your handle. So instead of like twisting, oh, yeah, yeah, instead of twisting with your fingers, it like rotates okay. within the handle of the shaft. Uh-huh. So his idea was to kind of create a different design where it was like more user friendly so uh-huh. you could actually use the turn of the shaft to like stabilize. So we wanted to, we ended up redesigning it and we have a quarter inch shaft so it's a little bit bigger. Um, you can torque a little bit better with it. Um, it's magnetized, the tip is, so like your screws aren't gonna like fall off if you put them on, which the other one didn't. Um, so we just kind of redesigned the shape of it, yeah. and we made it a bigger shaft, made that magnetized tip, and then we put the label of either like if it's a flathead or a Phillips on the back of the handle, 
on the butt of the handle just so it's like if it's in your tool bag you could see it and uh -huh. grab it so yeah we started that um probably three years ago and really it's just been a slow growing like business mm -hmm. like we're really busy with our other ventures so yeah. like pushing it like wasn't like number one priority but it uh -huh. was something that we saw a need for it um and him being an electrician he's spoken with other electricians and yeah so we ended up introducing it to some of the electrical supply houses in town and they loved it we uh were able to like come up with packaging we found a manufacturer right um, some of the parts were from the united states and were from china and we mm -hmm. actually assembled them ourselves oh wow and so right now i think we're in like 15 different electrical supply houses in arizona that's cool mm. so yeah i mean they're constantly reordering and it's something that pays for itself and yeah, yeah. there's definitely some profit we've been reinvesting um, for sure back yeah. in the business to just buy more and more yeah inventory to to try and add more supply houses uh -huh. so something that's just kind of fun that we're doing on the side I, it's nothing like to brag about but it's yeah. like like it's just fun to have it it's know? cool yeah it's more of a side hustle than yeah it's, exactly yeah and it's something I, I almost look at it as like a retirement account where yeah you know it's just you can all the money you're making in profit you just keep in the account and yeah you keep growing it yeah that's one cool. day you might do something with it, maybe sell it. I don't yeah. know. Right, right. Know. So, did you have to like trademark the design? Yeah. So, the nick. What's cool is the nickname of this is the twirly screwdriver, uh -huh. and we were able to actually get the trademark for twirly screwdriver. Okay. So yeah, on the mm -hmm. side of our handle it says twirly. Nice. And it's, yeah, it's pretty sweet. That's really cool. What's I like, like that, what's like the process of getting something trademarked? So we just had to go through um, like a lawyer that kind of specialized in trademarks. Uh -huh. and there's like applications you have to fill out and then you have to send it in to the like the government I forget what they're called but yeah. like the trademark yeah. committee or whatever and then they review it look at it and tell you if you're approved or denied and thankfully they approved it and our logo and everything so and then do you have um like did you have to have like an engineer or anything help you guys with the design? Yeah, we had a, an industrial engineer. Okay. So we basically came to him with like a prototype. Mm -hmm. We actually 3D printed like a oh, handle wow. and some different things. And so he like basically created building plans of our screwdriver, every little aspect. Um, and that's what we used to get pricing and send it out to like handle manufacturers. Yeah, yeah. And the shaft was the hardest part because it's not just a straight shaft. It's has like a unique bend to it mm -hmm. so that was the most difficult part um but we ended up finding a company in china that makes that for us hmm. that's cool was that a difficult process to find people to yes. create and manufacture and all the different parts kind of difficult because uh -huh. sometimes well one they're like um like 10 hours ahead of us so that's kind of a pain yeah. just the communication and sometimes yeah. like yeah it's like we're not completely sold on them for our shafts so we're like okay. always Kind of looking to like see if we can find someone that for sure can communicate better we'd love to keep it here in the united yeah, states local. but it's like the pricing that we're getting is like 10 times the, oh, the, yeah the price of like, geez is there certain manufacturers that you guys have like you're you plan on keeping for a while or yeah i mean the handle manufacturer i think they're out of like kansas or something like that and they were great like they they do this for like all different brands Oh yeah. Um, so, what they specialize in. So then, yeah, there's definitely certain ones that once you find them, as long as they can keep the pricing where it should be, then it makes yeah. Sense. It, yeah. Do you have any tips for someone who's wanting to create, I guess, any sort of product, like where just where to start in terms of looking for manufacturers or someone to help them create their product? Um. So one thing that helped us is our industrial designer kind of had connections mm -hmm. to different like. I don't know what the website was, but there is a website that like you can post what you're wanting and then all sorts of different manufacturers yeah. will basically give you pricing on what it would be and right. you can kind of pick like, okay, this guy's in India, this guy's in China, this guy's in Mexico, uh -huh. and, you know, these people are in the United States and then they'll kind of give you pricing. So that's kind of where we started. Um, but then we just basically reached out to some other manufacturers that we knew and they kind of said, hey, I worked with this guy in China. They've been great, I can introduce you. So our, our first conversation with this one company, he happened to be in Vegas doing a trade show mm. um, there. So we met him, we drove up there one night and met him at the hotel and basically had a sit down with him and just kind of went over like, okay, what do you 
guys do, you know, get more plans. It was nice being able to meet him face to face because, yeah. you know, when you're just sending money out to China, you yeah. know what you're <laughs> yeah. it's kind of scary. But, so yeah, it was, it worked, it ended up working out. Yeah. And that's fun. Super, that's super cool. Um, would you, do you feel like your experience in the, in the construction industry kind of led to this? Yeah, absolutely. I think having that relationship with my electrician uh-huh. and then him having this idea, it's, you know, it, it, it we're able to use that product right. for other electricians. It's kind of fun sure. like, being on the job and having a, an, an electrician from a company show up and I see them using our screwdriver. It's like, oh, cool. That's that's <laughs> really cool. That's yeah. cool. So, yeah, it's, it's fun. That's, that's cool. cool. Yeah, it's cool to see just how, like, you know, a lot of people we've interviewed, how certain doors they took or certain business ventures they started down kind of led them to something else and it doesn't mean they closed the other one, but it just creates multiple, multiple yeah, absolutely. things within them. Yeah. I love having like a core business and then having little businesses around that right. that kind of complement it mm-hmm. or that they're all kind of tied together somehow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So would you say that your construction business is your core business or is Jump Shack more of your... I would say the construction business, yes, okay. absolutely is the core business. Mm-hmm. And then the other ones are just kind of little side hustles. Yeah, that's cool. What, what makes it your core business? Is it because... Um, because you enjoy it the most or just because of the demand and the revenue that it provides? I guess I would have to say because it probably occupies the most amount of time um, mm-hmm. and that's the business that creates the most revenue. Uh-huh. Um, but the Jump Shack's catching up really quick. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, how about we kind of dive into the Jump Shack a little bit. What what led you to, to start that? Like where did the Jump Shack start? So yeah, I always have like neighbors and friends and people reach out to me like mm-hmm. when they have little things they want to do around their houses or mm-hmm. usually with friends and family. Like honestly, I don't like working for friends and family. Yeah. So <laughs> I just try to like help them out. Like, okay, call this guy. Yeah. You yeah. know, I would rather like give my service to like do it for free uh-huh. than that than try to charge someone and something go wrong and then hate me forever for sure it's not worth it so yeah. never so yeah i always like there was a while like we moved into a new neighborhood and a lot of neighbors were like hey do you know anybody that like we want to put our above ground trampoline below ground do you know anybody that does that and so it was like man like i agree like we we actually want to do that ourselves so uh-huh. like at the time the process was you buy like a dana playground trampoline which is like a nice above ground trampoline right and you dig out the hole, you build like a block retaining wall mm-hmm. to hold back the dirt. And then sometimes you have to install, install air tubes. So when you're jumping, the air can escape properly. Okay. Or if you don't, you have to install it like, you know, six inches above ground yeah. so the air can escape. Yeah. So that was kind of the process. So we would hire like a pool company to come and dig the trampoline <laughs> pit and then get the, you know, my mason to come do the block wall and then yeah. put the trampoline in. Um, but when I was getting ready to do it for my house, um, I was like researching and trying to find like, okay, what's the best trampoline? There's got to be a better like way of doing this than just, you know, buying an above ground trampoline that wasn't really meant to go below ground and doing all this other stuff. So that's when I found a company out of the United Kingdom called Capital Play and Capital Play had a trampoline that was specifically designed to be installed below ground. Um, they had a built in retaining wall system on the frame itself Mm -hmm. so it didn't have to install an expensive masonry block wall Um, they also had patented vented pads from a company called trampoline down under um, that basically allowed for that air to escape properly so when you're jumping on it the air is coming through those vented holes in the safety pad that covers the the springs Mm -hmm. and it allows you to have a lot better bounce and um, it eliminates that pad slap noise that you sometimes hear yeah. on the trampoline where mm-hmm. those pads are, <laughs> yeah. the air is trying yeah. to escape mm-hmm. and the pads are bouncing up and down. So when I found that company, I was like, wow, this is like really cool. There's like, this is really niche. This is a really good product. So I called them and I said, I wanted one for my house. I wanted to buy it. And I told them like, I feel like this is like a really niche product that could go big here in the United States. And I asked them like, you know, what would it take to be like a dealer for you guys? Yeah. And the timing just happened to be perfect. Uh-huh. They were actually in the process. Um, they're a worldwide company. They're all over the place, but they were just starting to expand to the United States. Huh. So 
I actually became their very first dealer in the United States, wow. Wow. which was super cool. Um, so they sent me a trampoline. We installed it, and right away, like just holding the frame of the trampoline, I was just like blown away. It was like three times as heavy as like the Walmart trampoline frame oh, that yeah. you normally, you know, see. So it was like the steel was just extra heavy, like gauge steel. Um, everything about it, like the safety pad, was a lot thicker. The material that was used was like a heavy duty vinyl. Um, the jump mat was more like a commercial grade jump mat. So everything about it, the springs, everything was just way more like commercial grade, like better yeah, quality. Yeah. And I was just like, wow. So we installed it um, and it the bounce was just amazing. My kids loved it. Everyone loved it. And I was just like, wow, this could really be something amazing. So I started mm-hmm. out with them um, just by, you know, I think I, I bought like four trampolines from them. I'm like, all right, let's try this out. Mm-hmm. I hired a web designer. We got a website going and then just kind of try to just do stuff to make it grow organically. Yeah. I had a little pay-per-click campaign. And at first it was slow, but I think honestly, like within the first like couple months, we sold the four trampolines. Oh, wow. Um, so then I ordered like two pallets, which I think was like eight trampolines mm-hmm. there. Um, and then with that, we also sold that probably like within the next couple of months, I started reaching out to local landscaping companies oh, nice. and bringing them on as almost like a sub dealer. Yeah. So I was like okay. a regional dealer. And then I had these sub dealers that I was setting up, um, who was our, you know, they're already in with all these customers. They're yeah. doing the landscape right. packages and it was just mm-hmm. something they added on. Uh-huh. So I was kind of trying to incentivize them, you know, as a part of my business plan to to develop these sub dealers that would also be buying trampolines. Mm-hmm. So we went through that pretty quick and then we ended up ordering a half container because every time you, you're able to buy in larger quantities, you're able to get better pricing. So For I, sure. yeah. I was able to use all the money that I made on these little pallet orders and I rolled it into buying a half container. And then um, while we were waiting for that to come, I think we ordered another couple pallets of trampolines. So the half container arrived, um, you know, within that first year, I think we ended up selling like two or like, I think two half containers and then like probably three pallets worth of trampolines. Oh, wow. On that first year. So that was pretty exciting. Um, and then what's been crazy is obviously over that time we've been like, I've been using all of the profits to, yeah. help, you know, put more money into organic so you're turning all the profit back into yeah, the business. Yeah, thankfully because of the construction. Company, yeah. Like I'm yeah. Having, I might not yeah. take the money. I don't need to take the money. Yeah. The jump shack. So we're able to just roll all the money back into more inventory, like more marketing. Yeah. So we, you know, we started doing like some magazine ads. I think we have a banner. We had a banner at the Highland uh, High School, like fo- like. Oh yeah. Like on their uh, their football field. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, we did a lot of AdWord campaign stuff search like organic stuff um and then we ended up buying a full container so we just used all that money and we just kept rolling it into buying more and more yeah um so we received our first full container three weeks ago and we completely sold through it in two weeks two weeks yeah and how many is in a container there's like 80 trampolines in a container wow that's a lot of trampolines so yeah like with this, everyone being home for the coronavirus, uh-huh. like everyone's like looking for things for their kids to do. They want yeah. their Xbox, yeah. all their like electronic devices. A lot of people are taking this opportunity to like redo their backyards. Yeah. So thankfully, you know, most of them are wanting trampolines. So yeah. yeah, it's been absolutely crazy. Like right now, we are hundred percent out of stock, which is like another problem that you deal with. Yeah. It's like how do you like manage inventory yeah it's like sometimes what you thought was going to sell didn't sell and so yeah. you're always trying to like not have too much inventory but then like right now i don't have any inventory. so it's like <laughs> yeah. so we've already ordered another container and now we're just waiting for it to arrive so when that happens how do you keep customers coming when they go to your site and it's out of stock like how do you keep them there i or guess in bring the, it like, back when yeah they're, like when you're in the batter's box how do you keep them there like what, what do you do yeah, so that's something I'm actually trying to figure out right now. But like, what I'm trying to do is I have developed good relationships with other dealers in other states. Uh-huh. Okay. So what I'm trying right now is to basically 
I'm reaching out to all these dealers and I'm saying, hey, I'm going to send you all of these customers that I have. They're going to come buy your trampolines because what I think is going to happen and what is, has already happened um, is they're going to get to where they're out of trampolines right. and my inventory is going to land Yeah. and then they're going to be all sending all their customers to me Right. because it's just kind of like a timing thing right now. Uh-huh. Like a lot of people are buying it from the same manufacturer mm-hmm. and so, yeah, I think some of these guys that have inventory right now they're going to be out and then they're going to be sending their clients to me. Okay. And so all my customers, basically, I, I'm just helping them find trampolines. Yeah. If I don't have it, which I don't, I'm saying, okay, here's your options. Mm-hmm. You want these sizes? This is who you, sh- who you should contact. Yeah. And I, I always felt like if you give, you'll receive. For sure. Right. So that's kind of what we try to do. Have, nice. you, have you seen that so far just with any of your other business ventures? I think so. I mean, like my biggest thing is to always have integrity. Mm-hmm. Um, you always want to be responsive you want to communicate manage expectations and I feel like with everything like if you can do those things if you can be responsive communicate be honest have integrity like you're going to be successful like and that's just what we've tried to do so I mean people are always happy like they appreciate even though we don't have it we're, we're helping them find people that do have it yeah. because they don't know where to look a lot that's of people cool. And so I, you know, I feel like they're going to tell other people about it. And these companies that are receiving all these extra orders, when they don't have something, they're going to reach out to me to see if they can help their customers. Uh And that way we're all kind of like a team helping each other. Yeah. And then we can all grow. Yeah. Cool. Um, Okay. So a few questions about this whole process. So when you originally reached out to them to become a dealer at that moment, did you already decide I want to make this a business? Um, I love looking for opportunities uh-huh. to make money, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> and I felt like, you know what, there's enough like people talking about in-ground trampolines, yeah. I felt like, let's just try it. Yeah. I love trying things. I've failed with a lot of things, you know, but you don't know what's going to happen until you try, so exactly. it wasn't that, that big of an investment mm-hmm. to just buy a few trampolines and see what happens. Yeah. When you're already doing it for yourself, so you're like, yeah, exactly. Well. It's like, let's use mine as the example. and. And it kind of goes with construction. I mean, I have landscapers that that have all the equipment and everything. So with all of our Arizona installs, basically I refer it to one of my, um, or I have a few different guys, but basically they're basically landscaping companies and mm-hmm. they have all the equipment and manpower to dig the trampolines and assemble them and, and do a turnkey for the customers. So it's providing work for them as well. Right. So you use these landscaping companies then to install it? Yep. Mm-hmm. And so do you refer, like the customer comes to you, they buy a trampoline, what's after that? So usually the process is they'll call me, they'll want the trampoline, they'll ask for an install quote, and I'll say, listen, um, we have preferred installers, here's their number, like I can kind of give them a ballpark cool. of what it's yeah. going to be, so they yeah. have an idea, uh-huh. um, and then they can call the installers and schedule it directly that way I'm kind of I'm not the middleman. yeah and I also do that for liability reasons like for sure I would rather just sell them the trampoline uh-huh. and then yeah yeah someone else tackle yeah. the, the install and we're there for you know customer support like we a lot of people will try and do it themselves mm-hmm. and so we'll take them through the process we have really good install videos that show step-by-step oh, okay. instructions that's cool um, we also have like downloadable PDF, so yeah. we make it like as easy as possible. Thankfully, yeah. the manufacturer's been doing this a while, um, all over the world, and so they've kind of fine tuned their process mm-hmm. and how everything's done. So, since you have other companies taking care of the install and everything, do you have other employees as part of Jump Shack, or do you keep it pretty lean? Is it just you handling most of it? With the Jump Shack, it's me, and then every once in a while, I, I'll hire my brother or someone uh-huh. part time to help me to deliver. Do stuff? Yeah, with like when we had this boom of sales over the past couple of weeks. I've had to have, have help like doing deliveries and uh-huh. helping me. Like we've been shipping out like every day, like multiple trampolines all yeah. over the United States. Yeah. So just kind of getting everything from the warehouse to where they're, the, the freight companies are picking it up, uh-huh. and getting it out, making sure everything's going how it's supposed to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you handle like phone calls, marketing, all that stuff? Yep. Right now, the goal obviously is to have my company work for me and not me work for my <laughs> Exactly, company. yeah. So yeah, as soon as like we can roll it, scale it, yeah, you know, and, and have people in place where they can take on the, uh-huh. the phone calls and 
worry about the shipping. I yeah. That's the goal. So at what point does that happen? How, how do you know that it's time to kind of expand and, and scale and start hiring? I think once we can consistently have like, you know, the same number of cells every day or, you know, every week or mm-hmm. whatever. And, and then when we can manage the inventory levels and kind of keep things, then, then it, it'll be easier to yeah. make that step for sure. Cool. So give us like a, a timeline. When was this when you first got started with Jump Shot? A uh, year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so you're still rolling. And yeah. Just this, started. I think end of this, like August will be our two year. Month. Yeah. That's wow. cool. That's it's moved pretty fast. Yeah. It's, it's definitely grown fast. And yeah. It's, it's been a fun business. You know, I've, finally, I've been able to create an online business that like is, that's doing good. And, uh-huh. you know, it's, it's, we always say like we sell fun and, it's fun to like show up to a house delivering a trampoline and seeing everyone so excited that mm-hmm. you know their trampolines there. And yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. What? Why do people go for the in ground versus above ground? What are the benefits? I think the biggest thing is just it. It's not so much of an eyesore. Mm-hmm. You know, with an above ground, you usually have safety, like yeah. safety enclosure around it. So they go for it because it's safer. It's mm-hmm. flush to the ground. So if you fell off of it you're not falling like three feet to the ground <laughs> yeah um you don't necessarily have to have a safety enclosure so mm-hmm. it usually looks better in your yeah. backyard if you have you know if you, if you want your backyard to really be more uh, appealing to the eye so i would say safety and then just looking better are the two probably the biggest reasons mm-hmm. and it's, it's kind of fun because like my daughter she'll like run and do tricks from the grass onto the trampoline yeah. and then off to the tra- you know from the trampoline onto the ground right. Yeah. Just, there's a lot more stuff you can do with it. That's cool. Flush to the ground. Mm-hmm. Is there much uh, customization that the customers have with the trampolines, or is there just like you know these three options? And so there's like multiple sizes. We have rectangular shapes um, and round trampolines. By far, our 14 foot diameter round is the most popular of the round sizes. The most popular of all of the trampolines is our 10 foot by 14 foot rectangular trampoline. Uh-huh. Um, but then from there, like you have either a green colored safety pad that covers the springs or a gray color, and then you can have like a corner enclosure, a half enclosure or a full safety enclosure. So like, let's say you had to install your trampoline where there's a wall on two sides. Yeah. Well, you could order like a corner enclosure that would protect your kid from the, just those two sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you, you know, you can do a full enclosure or no enclosure. So that's kind of the customization that you can okay. you can do. That's cool. Um, so you you probably had to have some pretty good marketing tactics to grow so fast within this first year and a half. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about what you did in terms of marketing or where you learned about marketing to be able to grow your business? Yeah. So basically, um, I reached out to a company that I've used before um, that that handles my like AdWord campaigns uh-huh. and SEO type stuff. So it's like stuff. a digital marketing agency? Yeah, exactly. Um, in the past with other businesses, I've tried to do it on my own. Yeah. But I just don't. I mean, I realized that that's not my like... <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can like build a website and like do stuff, but it's like, you know what? These guys know how to do it. Right. They know in they're a way doing. that's totally different and, yeah. and it's going to like grow and, and be better faster. So yeah. I, yeah, I hire them and I trust them and they've done a great job and they know what they're doing and so yeah we just you know I've been doing that and it's been great that's cool and then you mentioned that you've done you know other things to advertise besides digital advertising you had like the a banner at a high school have you done anything else like that and have you seen success from from other forms of marketing and advertising um, definitely AdWords has been the best yeah just the sponsored links yeah um, having a a network of local landscape companies has helped a lot too because mm-hmm. we're getting a lot of repeat orders um, so that's given us a lot more sales so like selling in Arizona is like our like my main goal because I don't have to pay for shipping costs right um, we offer free shipping on the trampoline so anything that's shipped out of state like I don't make as much money on right um, so the goal is to try and keep as much in Arizona as possible okay. so, so having like a lot local. of local landscape companies yeah um, networking with them has been the best but then besides that yeah just like the AdWord campaign we've, we've been in like the 
um, the magazine, I forget what they're called, like Home Concepts or some different ones that come out. Mm-hmm. Um, and that has brought in a, like a, a little bit of business, but mainly just people I think are online Googling and ground trampoline or and you just pop up. Yeah, yeah. That, that's been the best. Yeah. Cool. Word of mouth, I'm sure, probably helps yeah. a bit too. And people come over for like parties yeah. and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And I, I bought a cargo van pretty quick that I wrapped with like, oh, nice. the logo and oh, my kids cool. are on it. And that's, that's been good too. Like just driving that around, doing deliveries and mm-hmm. um, just people seeing it. Like I've tried to make it to where like in Gilbert, like, like everyone sees it. Everyone, yeah. I'm trying to get people to talk about it. Uh-huh. Like, I have my kids doing things like just trying to. Um, create as much awareness as possible yeah. like when people think about it they're like hey you gotta call in like doing like a, like Facebook stuff you know yeah. that, that helps too like social media advertising uh-huh. and I think we live in such like a close like connected community that it's yeah. so easy to spread like that and kind of just go viral in a sense with just yeah, word of mouth absolutely. and spreading it yeah word of mouth has been big yeah. oh yeah that's huge do you spend more time cleaning your pool than you spend swimming in it then call Flamingo Pools today Flamingo Pools is your go-to swimming pool maintenance and repair company in the East Valley. Whether it's weekly maintenance, repairs, green to cleans, or one-time cleanings, Flamingo Pools will take care of you. Honest, reliable, and innovative. Just a few of the many good things Flamingo Pools customers have to say about them. Ask them about their mineral treatment, which will keep your chemical levels down, allowing you to have a healthier bathing experience. At Flamingo Pools, They know that your pool was made to be enjoyed, so let them handle the rest. Check them out at azflamingopools.com or give them a call at 480-422-6013. Mention this podcast and you'll get your first month of maintenance completely free. That's azflamingopools.com and 480-422-6013. Okay, so I know a lot of people, um, I guess, struggle with um, making money and then being able to invest that back back into their business. They're nervous that they just made this money and they're going to lose it now. Uh, is that something that you've developed over time or are you just naturally you know, able to take risks like that? I think it's something I kind of developed over time. It's always scary at first because you, you, know, you worked so hard to get this money yeah. and to reinvest it is scary. But once you do and you can you know, grow it and see your fruits from doing that. I I think it it starts to become less and less riskier. Like obviously we've looked into getting like loans for doing things mm-hmm. but when you look at the cut that they're gonna want and the interest that you're gonna have to pay on that money, um, I per- personally would rather just start smaller and just continue to like build it and grow it. Yeah. Um having another company that pays my salary you know helps obviously because i'm not having to rely on that income to Uh put food on the table so that's kind of how i've I've tried to do it is like i want that to be something that can grow i like it because it's almost like producing compounding interest it's like instead of putting my money into you know stocks or something that i don't control like i control this i can put this much money into that and i know i'm gonna make this much profit if I sell these trampolines yeah. yeah and if I can take that and then roll it into more trampolines and more profit like it just keeps growing and yeah. growing and it's really the key so to that's kind of what I'm wanting to do is mm-hmm. like okay let's use this as a retirement business like I don't need to take any money from this because I can just keep building my construction company but with the jump shack I want this to be something that can hopefully get to where like I can provide jobs for other people um where they can kind of help me run it, but also it's something that I just keep the money in the company and just let it grow and grow until hopefully one day I can retire because I have a nest egg of money. Yeah. At what point do you think you need to start hiring people to, to kind of do it all for you? I think, I mean, pretty soon. Like, obviously we're seeing that it's a, po- a popular product in the United States. People want these. It's a good quality product and people see that and so they're telling their friends about it they're um it's i don't know so i think the next time we get our container that shows up and i think it's time to start you know having someone that can help out it's always like hard at first because 
then you have to start taking some of that profit to pay people. Yeah. yeah. Where right now I don't have to pay anyone. Yeah, exactly. But you know, sometimes you can't grow unless you can scale and yeah. have someone else that can jump in there for you. For sure. And yeah, like I said earlier, like I would rather have my company work for me than we me work for my company. That's always the goal. Yeah. Yeah, and so kind of with that, like, how do you manage all your time with? you know I, I, we've talked about these three things kind of that you have going on and i'm sure you have other things that you have a family and stuff like that how, how do you split up the time evenly and um that's always the hard part is balancing like work with family yeah um thankfully like a lot of my construction stuff i can do early in the morning and go out and you know check on jobs and make sure everything's running good the nice thing about the construction stuff is i don't self-perform anything mm -hmm. um i have either peace crews or subcontractors that are doing the work mm -hmm. so it's just making sure that everything's organized and they show up when they're supposed to and you know you check on and make sure everything's going good so once that part of it is done it's like then you, it's pretty easy to the trampoline business kind of runs itself yeah. where you get your orders and it's just making sure that the orders get shipped out or they get delivered locally um, I have a separate phone number for the jump shack so i know like how to answer my phone right and you can answer questions so i mean you can almost do it while you're doing mm -hmm. your other yeah jobs just yeah. because you don't have to be in front of a computer all day long to, sure. to run it yeah. yeah um so it sounds like you have a passion for just starting up businesses in general would you say that that's true yeah i love it i think it's it, it's exciting it's challenging uh -huh. like i love like coming up with a concept and then yeah putting different things together and different people to help you build it and grow it yeah and it's fun when they actually work out and you can make money from it. right yeah. right i think a lot of people love that initial idea but the hard thing is keeping it going after that first you know setup yeah. phase how how do you keep pushing yourself or motivating yourself to continue to grow these businesses after that initial you know fun startup phase yeah definitely that's the hard part like once you're up and running it's like okay now i gotta actually sell this <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think realizing that like what where my strengths are and where my weaknesses are like i'm not a salesman mm -hmm. i'm not like an outgoing person that just loves to like <laughs> go out and talk <laughs> uh -huh. to everyone and uh -huh. knock on doors and yeah that's not me um but you know thankfully like if you can invest in people that are good in yeah. that, you know, then that's what they do, and yeah. they're the experts. So I've tried to put together like the right team, right the right people that are like experts at what they do, uh -huh. and let them do that for me, and and then that's kind of been what's able to help us to get sales and to to grow. Yeah. Would you say that you love running the businesses as much as you do starting them? Um. It's fun, yeah. Once it's up and run, like I love, I love running it. Yeah, I love watching. Like I love making money. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's fun, you know. Yeah, it's fun. Like when you finally have something that's that sure. people like yeah. and, and they're buying it. Um, so I, I think that's funner than st even starting it. Is once it's like already up and running. Yeah, um, it's a lot more challenging when you're starting out because you're like, okay, how am I gonna pay for this? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna buy it? Like. But once it's it starts kind of snowballing a little bit, yeah, it's yeah. nice. So it sounds like there's that initial fun part of like creating this idea and get it all started up, and then later on, once it starts to snowball, it's fun again. There's kind of that middle murky part, which can be hard. Do you have any tips or advice for someone who's kind of stuck in that that phase? They've gotten it started up, but they just ha can't figure out how to get things rolling. I think the biggest thing is to not give up. It's really easy to sometimes just be like, "Oh, this isn't working." Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> but like just pushing through because mm -hmm. sometimes like you just have to go a little bit further and right around the corner all of a sudden boom now it's working yeah and I think if you don't give up and if you're really passionate about it um, you got to have a, like a passion for what you're doing you have yeah. to like it like if, if I hated trampolines or <laughs> didn't like you know the joy that they brought to, to kids or I thought they were dangerous and, yeah you know there's people that, that hate trampolines that mm -hmm. won't let their kids jump on them well, yeah. that, that's fine like and those people shouldn't be selling so right, probably wouldn't yeah. be good. so yeah if you're passionate about it like just keep working at it and like I said if you're honest you have integrity you're responsive and you communicate I mean you're gonna you're gonna have business you're gonna grow and yeah people are gonna trust you and, and buy stuff from you nice um, have you had any mentors along the way that have helped you out 
Um, my dad has been like my biggest mentor. I think he's kind of helped me with the construction stuff, and I always go to him for advice. He's always owned his own business, yeah. So he always, you know, gives me good advice on what to do and what what his thoughts are on scaling and, for sure. and different things. I've I've had a lot of buddies that own their own businesses, you mm-hmm. know. So I'm always trying to like go to lunch with people and yeah. kind of pick their brains uh-huh. on what they would do and. So I've just kind of used friends and family to kind of help me along the way, and um, it's always been kind of the way I've done it. That's cool. Any uh, books or podcasts that you read or listen to to so like help you out? yeah, I mean, I there was a while there that I was like listening to all sorts of stuff. Like I really liked one um, from Grant Cardone. I think mm. his name was. It was yeah. like mm-hmm. the millionaire the guide to the millionaire booklet or something okay. like that that one had a lot of good things i've like read the like thinking grow, grow rich. rich and rich dad poor dad yeah. and a lot of those different things um those obviously have a lot of good tips and things that you can do and um but a lot of times it's just going out and doing it like sounds like that's the figuring biggest it thing, out yeah. and pushing through it and yeah when when things go south or you, you feel like you're just having like a stormy day and it's like one thing after another goes wrong, how do you where do you find the motivation to keep going? It's hard sometimes, like especially in the construction industry. Yeah. Like I would say like earlier this year, like in I think it was the beginning of January, like we had a job where we were doing some demo and I had some guys clip a a sprinkler pipe. And it flooded the entire space. Oh my goodness! I remember driving over, like when I got the call, to go look to see, and it was like at a piano store. Oh, <laughs> and no. so, I was, and like we had done, like we built their showroom in the like years prior. Yeah. And so I knew it was like all this high end piano. Oh, no. I was just like, oh my gosh! Like, like at that moment, you're just like, okay, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thankfully, like it. <laughs> It worked out where we uh, I was able to get a disaster company there like ASAP. We dried it up. We, you know, got the dehumidifiers going and uh-huh. we got it all like basically dried out and there was no mold. Like everything was good. Like, like no pianos were damaged. Like wow. we were able to like somehow like mir- miraculously <laughs> yeah <laughs> get it like fixed ASAP. But, but yeah, I remember and there's moments like that where you're like, geez, just like this, everything you've worked for could be like gone for sure (laughs) um and it's scary but yeah it's like i think it's just trying to (laughs) look at the big picture and go do you know what it is what it is Mm -hmm. like yeah let's just keep moving i can't give up you know just got to keep fighting yeah keep moving forward and tomorrow's another day you know let's try to i've always been like an optimistic person Mm -hmm. yeah um i i like looking for like the positive i like looking at the good side of things so i think having that mindset of okay let's let's you know what what's good about this like Mm -hmm. obviously instead of like thinking about all the bad stuff that happened i thought about all the the people that stepped in to like help take care of this problem that we were able to get past it and and move forward that's awesome i think the the coronavirus is kind of an example of something that kind of just came in and like stopped everyone right away like you were saying without anyone expecting it uh, have you been able to focus on or find any positives from that situation? Yeah, that's definitely. I mean, I think I was looking at I think like over thirty million people have filed for unemployment yeah, now. Yeah, that's so, crazy. Yeah, it's it's definitely like it's a hard thing. Um, if I was only doing construction right now, I would be a little bit worried because, like, like I said, most of the stuff I do is commercial uh-huh. and. A lot of my clients aren't in business or haven't been able to be in business they've been working from home so no one's wanting to expand or you know remodel or do anything like that so um, yeah I mean it's scary I, I feel for all the people that have had to like like shut down their yeah. businesses um, my wife owns a tumbling studio um, and she had I think March 16th we had to shut the doors and wow so that's been you know tough yeah but thankfully, like, because I don't have all my eggs in one basket, yeah. but, you know, the trampoline business has been able to kind of get us through this. Mm-hmm. So that's been definitely helpful. Yeah. 
So would you say it's pretty important then for people to not just, like you said, put all your eggs in one basket and diversify a bit into other I think so other because flows of income? I mean, in like 2008, 2009 when the economy tanked, I was only doing construction. Yeah. And like in one week, my phone went from ringing all the time to like literally nothing. Yeah. Wow. And everything dried up. I finished my jobs and it was like nothing. It's crazy. And I remember at that moment, I'm like, never again am I going to be in a place where like I'm only relying on my income from this like uh-huh. i want to diversify i want to yeah. figure out okay what other revenue streams can i create around this that might be able to survive something yeah. that you know like a recession or whatever uh-huh. and thankfully with the trampolines that's that's been the case like, right and you've been able I've been to absolutely slammed yeah. selling trampolines who would have thought you know, like, <laughs> I, th- I personally i thought like they're expensive trampolines they're not they're not yeah. cheap trampolines mm-hmm. and i thought you know if everyone's losing their jobs, they're not going to be able to buy trampolines. Yeah. But there's enough people out there that thankfully are, are still, still have a little bit of money. <laughs> Some people yeah. are still making money. Yeah. yeah. So it's worked out. That's cool. Um, so are your plans to just kind of keep keep growing the businesses you have? Or do you have you know specific plans for other other ventures you want to get started with? Um I, sometimes I have to be careful, like not to be like flavor of the week, and you know, <laughs> and create a job or a new business. Yeah. So I definitely like with my construction company, I want to keep growing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the, the Jump Shack, I want to keep growing that. Those are like my main two focuses right yeah. now. Um, I really want to grow the Jump Shack. So I think the plan is is to to possibly introduce a few new products this year mm-hmm. um, that are trampoline related. Um, right now we, we only sell in ground trampolines, um, but we've had enough people contact us about, you know, above ground trampolines or other things that I think it'd be fun to, to come up with a few more products that we can offer to people. Um, Cause there's people that rent, you know, that can't have an in ground trampoline because right. they're all in the For house sure, or, yeah. you know, there's just different, different cases so I think yeah we want to continue to grow the business continue to to get out there and you know optimize our website and um, add new products um, and just try and add more landscape companies more sub dealers yeah um, maybe get into like a sprinkler supply house where all these landscapers are going to buy their parts and stuff um, maybe we can get in yeah some kind of like big box stores or different places where they become sub dealer and so I don't know. There's a bunch of different like ways you can go about it. I've thought about like taking the jump shack and replicating what we did here and doing it in other states. Oh, where, okay, yeah. You know, reach out to a, a a company, a landscaper would make the most sense, and like, you know, I don't know, Colorado or or Florida or somewhere, and just say, hey, this is what we've done here, and kind of roll out like uh, almost like a franchise in a way, but a oh. way that they can take what I've done and replicate it. Right. Yeah. And and then figure out you know how to make that work and just kind of keep doing that in different places that'd be good yeah sounds like you definitely uh have have a lot of plans for the future that we'll see it the sky's the limit it's kind of fun for sure yeah just see what happens yeah just yeah roll with it absolutely that's awesome well as we kind of wrap it up here we're gonna get into a little game we have you have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can so rapid fire just like one word answers almost yeah um and yeah we'll we'll get started on that um down you want me to start yeah we'll get started let me know when you're ready i am uh ready all right three two one uh favorite junk food uh reese's peanut butter cups Uh, if you could have one superpower what would it be to fly music you turn on when nobody is around Ooh. um rascal flats uh if you're stuck on an island what would you bring Mm. Ugh, a GoPro. My <laughs> favorite book. Um, I would have to say the. the shoot, I forgot. It's it is the Navy SEAL that a guy that took down Bin Laden. <laughs> oh okay. Oh yeah. Um, fruits or vegetables? Fruits. Uh, favorite quote. Um. Thoughts become things. Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Michael Jordan. Nice. Nice. There we go. Um, if you could have dinner with anyone in time, who would it be? 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> you want to slide it in there? <laughs> um, shoot. Probably George Washington. There you go. Nice. That's a good one. Any specific reason why? Or? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely like different times and what he did was a lot different than what we did. Exactly. Now. Different ideas. It'd be cool to hear like, yeah, you know, what he went through and all, the, all of his experiences. For sure. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um, before we totally wrap up here, I just want to see if you have any just like last, you know, parting bits of advice for an entrepreneur that's wanting to, to start up their own business. I think the biggest thing is just to, to be a doer. I mean, a lot of times it's really easy to talk about ideas, yeah. Yeah. to write things down, to come up with things. But I think a lot of times people have a hard time taking that step to actually do it. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I think you know that you never know if you're gonna fail unless you try yeah so I think the biggest thing is yeah don't give up come up with an idea and then do it yeah. be a doer and see what happens you know a lot of times you open a door and it leads you to something and sometimes it may not be successful but it opens up another door mm-hmm. and then you're just constantly like learning more and creating new connections and like you never know you know where you'll end up but I, I have a feeling that you know as long as you're always trying to be a doer and you're trying to to move forward and progress that you're going to end up where you're supposed to be and and it'll work out for you yeah, yeah. No, I think that's agree. awesome advice and I think it's awesome to have people like you on the podcast who are just living proof of, of that you don't need you know all this money or connections or you know college education to get started as long as you just do something get started you can make huge yeah. things happen <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Um, we well, yeah, as we're wrapping up here, why don't you tell us where where people can find you? Jump Shop, um, Tyco, your toilet tool as well. Yeah, so all of our screwdrivers are like at local electrical supply houses. So uh-huh. there's like CES, City Electric Supply. There's CED, um, Annexer, different places um, for construction. Um, we're found at TycoBuilt.com. So any like new new custom homes or commercial tenant improvements yeah um, that's where you can find us for the jump shack uh, it's the jump shack.com that's where we have all of our uh, in-ground trampolines and all the information about that um, I was gonna do something where if people use the code hustle 100 they'll get a hundred dollars off any trampoline order okay. yeah. there so we go once we have our inventory back you know <laughs> they could use that promo code yeah and get a hundred dollars off any of their trampoline orders. Perfect. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully by the time this is posted, we might have yeah, some we'll, back in stock. Yeah, so hopefully. We'll, we'll let you know and we'll, we'll get that up so people can get their trampolines. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay, awesome. Well, once again, thank you so much, Tyler, for taking time out of your day. And yeah, thank and you. Coming on today. We've yeah, got, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. yeah, okay, awesome. We'll, uh, we'll catch you all next week.